Hey, Viola, what antibiotics can I prescribe safely for children? Find out today on Medical History Mysteries. to Medical History Mysteries. I'm Dr. Pam Maragliano Muniz, and with me as always, Mr. Pharmacology, Dr. Tom Biola. Tom, how's it going? Good, Pam. How are you today? Great, thank you. So last week, we talked about providing local anesthesia for children and the pediatric population. Now let's move on to antibiotics. Give it to me. Well, Again, I wish I could say that there's one antibiotic that's best for pediatric patients versus everybody else, but actually there isn't. There, there's really no specific recommendation for one uh, antibacterial agent that we could use over another in pediatric patients. And, you know, we always use the, the, the same beta-lactams. We use penicillin and amoxicillin, and they work really well for us in dentistry. So why wouldn't we use them uh, in, in pediatric and adult patients? But... You know, Pam, there's always a wrinkle when it comes to those aliens, right? And of course, I say aliens with love. I mean that they we, we treat them as being from a different planet. So treat them with TLC, okay? And that has to do with the fact that, remember, the beta-lactams that we use, amoxicillin, penicillin, are very acid labile, which means that they're, they're very sensitive to stomach acid. And therefore, you know, we, do, we dose accordingly. But remember that pediatric patients have less stomach acid than adult patients. So therefore, they're going to get greater absorption of amoxicillin and penicillin than you would get in an adult patient. And so we always have to keep that in mind when we're doing dosing uh, adjustments for kids, because we have to keep in mind that we'll, they'll get a greater overall effect or a greater absorption of the antibiotic, uh, antibacterial agent uh, versus uh, an adult patient. So having said that, Okay, Viola, what dose? You know what my answer is going to be. Don't ask me. Go look it up. Okay. We never want to make assumptions. We always want to know that we've looked up and done a fresh look because we like to keep numbers in our head. That's the way it works in, in medical practice and dental practice. But we want to make sure that we do a fresh look every time, that we're current with the guidelines. And also keep in mind, after you've done that dosage calculation, you go back to the medical history and say, okay, what is it about this specific pediatric patient? Are there extenuating circumstances? Has this child have, has this child had issues with diarrhea, bouts with diarrhea? Uh, you know, are there, are there issues with, do they have ulcerative colitis or, you know, do they have issues uh, like irritable bowel syndrome? Because we're talking, when we say pediatric patients, anywhere from newborns, right, to, you know, age 13 or 14, right? So, so we're talking about pediatric patients, what is their specific medical issue? And is the use of antibiotics or antibacterial agents contraindicated in that specific patient based on their medical condition? Now, I know we like to use amoxicillin and penicillin, but what if the patient's penicillin allergic? Can we use clindamycin in a pediatric patient? Is it contraindicated if the patient has a form of colitis already? Um, have they had a bout with C. diff-related diarrhea in the past? All that matters, okay? Uh, what about the use of uh, azithromycin? Well, azithromycin may be an option, but if that child is on a medication that increases their risk of arrhythmia, we do know that azithromycin can increase the risk of arrhythmia as well. And let's not forget that uh, uh, local anesthetic agents can increase the risk of arrhythmia too. So we want to be very prudent in our choice so we go with our gut. We always go with our standbys, the amoxicillin, penicillin. We do the dose calculation. We go to the medical history, make a judgment call from there based on all of the information as to what's the right one. But now the other problem is, should we prescribe at all? Is there really a need for an antibacterial agent? Again, you're the expert on this as the dental practitioner, right? So for certain things, we don't prescribe antibacterial agents. It's when there's maybe systemic involvement or self-tissue involvement that we may want to prescribe an antibacterial agent, but it's not always required. If you're saying to yourself, I know, but this is a pediatric patient, shouldn't I be worried? Well, in that respect, your dental skills take over, right? And you know best as to which issue requires antibiotic coverage and which one doesn't. So don't treat them any differently. Don't 
don't think that uh, infection is, is more widespread in pediatric patients than it is in adult patients, but do use those clinical diagnostic skills you use every day to your advantage and say, is it necessary? Is there involvement of other tissues here? Do I need a systemic antibacterial or not? That goes to the uh, conversation you and I have had many times, Pam, about antibiotic stewardship, you know, where we try to limit the use of antibacterials and antibiotics because we're always worried about the risk of uh, potentially not just super infection, but also resistance. Would you be inclined to say that the number of prescriptions for antibiotics for children are significantly less than that of adults? Would we maybe not prescribe for a child where in an instance we might consider a prescription for an adult? I would say, honestly, I'd be concerned about what other, having children of my own, aliens of my own, I'd be worried about other antibiotics they're on to begin with. Because, you know, kids get infections, they get ear infections, they get sinus infections. My kids seem seemingly were on antibiotics their whole childhood. So I'd be worried about prescribing an, an antibacterial agent for a child who's already on an antibacterial agent. And that's why we go back to the medical history to determine what they're on already, and should we be adding to that cauldron, or maybe we should be, you know, reserving because they're already on an antibiotic agent as it is. And we can always pick up the phone and call the pediatrician. 100% correct. Take a partner. I always say the same thing over and over again. If you're unsure, I know consults are annoying. I know they take time. I know that everybody has the best social graces on the medical side of things, but they don't want to hear from you necessarily make the phone call or, the, or take the, send the facts anyway, just to get the information you need. Because at the end of the day, we're all about giving positive outcomes to our patients. All right. Well, thank you for this advice. I think that this is going to be most helpful for those, not me, for others that treat children in their practices. So for Medical History Mysteries, I'm Pam Maragliano Muniz. With me as always, Tom Viola. And we look forward to continuing this coverage on pediatric care next week. Thanks, everybody.